Hello and welcome to another Excel VBA tutorial. So we're gonna wrap up our little series on the power pivot uh, object model. So this will be the third video in this series. Uh, and in this one, we're really just gonna look at the actual objects that exist in this model. So we're gonna look a little bit more in detail about a table. We're gonna look a little bit more in detail about the columns and then the model connection. So. Uh, think of this as our wrapping up uh, video for the series. If I kind of come across some stuff down the road that I feel uh, you know, is worthwhile to share or if other people kind of have recommendations on maybe stuff they'd like to see, uh, you know, then we'll kind of explore it as it comes along. But with that being said, let's uh, jump into VBA. If you haven't already, you wanna make sure you insert that little module. And then once you've got that all good to go, you can just simply go and say sub model, we'll do model table object. Okay, and then we're gonna declare a couple variables. The first one is gonna be called my model. This will be a model object. This represents power pivots. <clears throat> and then we're gonna be working with the tables collection that belongs to our model. So this will be a model uh, tables collection. So these are all the tables that currently exist in our data model. And then we're gonna to wanna to work with an individual table. So instead of having the collection, we're just gonna simply have the table object. Uh, and then also, uh, we're gonna to wanna to work with the columns. Well, each column, or sorry, each table can have multiple columns, and we refer to that as the model table columns collection. And then if we wanna uh, work with one individual column, it would be a model table column object. So just drop the S. And then our final variable will be a model connection. Uh, and then this one will simply be a model connection object. So those are our variables. That's always the first kind of thing in our videos. We're always gonna declare our variables. <clears throat> and then from here, we need to create a reference uh, to our power pivot model. And so it's very easy to do that. We're just gonna set my model, so the my model variable equal to the active workbook, and then we go to the model property. So each workbook has their own data model. If we wanna access that particular model, we just have to go into the workbook that uh, we wanna reference, and then we call the model property, and that returns the power pivot model collection. And then from here, if I wanna work with the tables that exist in my model, uh, We'll reference the model tables collection. So these are all the tables that currently exist in my model. Uh, and right now I have two. So if you watch the other videos related to this one, uh, you will know that we've already added some tables in here. And so what we're doing is we're just gonna reference those tables. And then once we have those tables, let's just do some basic stuff with them. So the first thing is we'll count the number of tables. And so we'll take our one and we'll do debug print model tables and then we'll call the count property and then if we run it we can see that there are two tables in our model and then from here if you want you can always get the parent object uh you know it kind of comes in handy sometimes <laughs> Uh, the parent object is basically just the object above that particular collection or object itself. Go so get the parent object name. Uh, and so if we wanted to, we could print it out. It would be model tables, and then it would be parent. And then we would just call the name property of that one as well. And so all it's telling you is it's referring to the data model. So it's saying, hey, this particular object collection exists in the model, so in the data model object. So that's kind of the hierarchy. It goes data model, model tables, and so on. You can do this with pretty much any object inside of VBA. Um, they usually have a parent at property about it, and that's just simply saying, hey, if you went up one level, uh, where would you end up? Now I'm gonna comment this stuff out because I don't want, really want it to be keep printing <clears throat> you know, as we're running stuff. So now that we've done that, uh, let's actually loop through each table. And so what we'll do is we're gonna loop through uh, each table and again should be looked very familiar so we'll say for each model table so remember we declared that up here you don't have to but it's a good habit to get into in our model tables collection 
Uh, we'll go to the next one and then we'll just print out some stuff. So we'll say debug print. We'll go into the model table. I'll ask for the name. Uh, maybe something we want to get is the model uh, table and then we want the record count. You know, so how many records are in there. Uh, we will do the debug print model table and then source name. Uh, this probably won't work because, well, it might work, but it's not going to return anything out because it's not coming from any external data source. It's just coming from within inside of our workbook. And because of that, it doesn't really have what we would call a source name. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, these might not return what you would be expecting if they're internal uh, Excel tables and stuff like that. So you, we might even get an error. I have to remember. <clears throat> okay, so we do this. Okay, no error. That's always good. So it's the name of the table. Um, it's the record count source name. Obviously, it's internal, so we're not getting that. And then it say, says the source workbook connection is the sales data set. So if I go back here and I hover over this, um, it's basically the table that it's coming from, if, if that's kind of how you want to think about it. Um, at least that's kind of how I like to think about it. So that's how we can loop through each table in our model. Let's go to the next thing and say we want to work with a particular table. So uh, what we'll do is we'll set model table equal to model uh, tables collection and then we'll go to the item method and then we can select a particular item. Um, we can either do an index or a key where the key is simply the name of the table. Uh, so I'll say, hey, maybe I want to work with the price data table. Uh, and as long as we get no errors, we're good to go. I'm going to comment this out because I don't want it to keep running. Otherwise, it's just going to be too much information. Control A, delete that. We're good to go. And then now that I have a table, I want to get all the columns that belong to that table. So what we'll do is we'll go in the model uh, columns collection. So we'll, we'll set that variable equal to the model table object. And then we'll go into the model tables columns collection. So this returns all the columns for that particular uh, table. And then from here, what we can do is we can say, hey, for each model column in model columns, go to the next one. And again, we're just going to print out some basic stuff about it. So the first thing we'll do is we'll debug print. And we'll do the name. Uh, we will now do model column and then we'll do the data type debug print model column and then we'll do the application and then I misspelled that so it's dbug and so here we're just gonna really what are we doing we're just looping through each column let's run this and see what we get hopefully no errors yeah, perfect. So we get the item, the data type, the application it belongs to. Unfortunately, I do not remember uh, which ones these are. I could probably just look if I wanted to. So let me open up Power Pivot. I don't want to leave you guys hanging. Okay, so 130. I'm assuming that's text because I have it formatted as text. And then 20, 20 would be a whole number. So there you go. That's what they represent. Okay, so we've done that. We've now looped through a, a set of columns in a table. Uh, let's work with the final object that we want to work with. Uh, let's work with the model connection. Uh, it's a little bit confusing, but it's okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our model connection variable. Uh, that will equal the my model object. And then we go into the data model connection. And then we go to the model connection uh, property that belongs to us. So now we have our model connection. And again, let's just print some stuff about it. So we'll say model connection. And then I want the command type uh, debug print uh, model uh, connection. Uh, and then I want the command text and then debug dot print model connection and then I think ADO connection. Uh, so the command type, uh, this is the particular uh, type. Well, it's like basically like the, the type of query that we're using. This is the query itself. And then this is the connection string that we would use for an ADO object. So 
basically it's not really useful at this point because they have to use the enumeration. This one does kind of come in handy because obviously this is kind of like our connection string. It's very long, um, but there are some stuff in there where if you wanted to kind of manipulate it a little bit more, you know, you do have access to it. Now, keep in mind, there are other, what is the word, aspects about our data model connection. Uh, I haven't played around with it too much just because, unfortunately, in this particular data model, I'm keeping it relatively simple and just using Excel tables. But if you're using a ODBC connection, an OLEDB connection, uh, there's that kind of stuff. There's text connection, I believe. Yeah, and then worksheet data connection. So there's a lot of stuff there. Uh, you just kind of have to keep in mind, it really is depending on what type of information you're using in your model. Because if I try to go and use an OLEDB connection, it's gonna come back and fail because I'm not really using an OLEDB connection anywhere in my model. So you just have to know really what data is currently inside of your data model before you start playing around with the connections. Because if you don't have the right ones there, it's just gonna return errors and then um, it's not going to really tell you anything. But with that being said, uh, that is the end of the video. Hopefully it was like a short one. There wasn't too much we had to go over. But if you have any questions about kind of what we covered today related to model tables, related to model columns, the connections, all that kind of fun stuff, you know, please make sure to put those questions down in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you as always. And then if you haven't already, make sure to like the video. You know, we always appreciate the support, trying to grow the channel. Um, it's been nice to see it kind of growing steadily. You know, it's always good to see that. And it's good to see people are kind of suggesting stuff. Definitely gives me certain direction. So I always appreciate it. So thank you. And then also, if you're new to the channel, or maybe you just stumbled across the video, uh, you know, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. So that way, uh, you know, you're going to keep getting updates as I release new videos. This was kind of a weird couple days. I've at least like three videos in two days. Uh, definitely not normal, but uh, I kind of had a couple, uh, you know, I guess reserved for this kind of particular moment. So yeah, uh, thanks again for watching, guys. Uh, we'll see you in the next video.